All right, good morning to you. It's 5.30 and you're watching TMJ4 News today. I'm Adriana Mendez. We have our meteorologist, Marissa Wallison, in the Weather Center this morning. Hey, it's the one day you get to wear green because you're not in front of the green screen. Yes. <laughs> yeah, exactly why I wore green. Yes, I, I know. You know. All right, looking forward to it. Thanks, Marissa. Well, right now, a 28-year-old Milwaukee man is behind bars after allegedly shooting and killing another man during a road rage incident. It happened around 1130 last night near the corner of 19th and Mitchell. Police say a 31 year old man died on the scene. The investigation is ongoing and if you have any information you're asked to contact MPD or Crime Stoppers at 414-224 tips. Milwaukee police are also investigating an overnight crash that killed a 21 year old woman. Authorities say it happened around 245 this morning on the 35th Street Bridge. Very few details are available at this time, so stick with us here at TMJ4 as we work to learn more information. Well, three people are recovering this morning after being shot outside of a bar in Kenosha. Two of them are in critical condition. This morning, we know a 31 year old man is in police custody in connection with the shooting. Authorities say it was a result of a fight at a bar near 23rd and Roosevelt. We spoke with a neighbor whose car was hit by the gunfire. He says that bar has consistently been a neighborhood nuisance. Hello. Like every weekend, this is the problem. Every weekend, every weekend. The same problem. Now, third victim was treated and released. The case remains under investigation. A fire has displaced about 200 residents of a Brown Deer apartment building from their homes. At least half of the residents are expected to return to their apartments this morning, while others will be sleeping in motels with family members or at temporary shelters. Our Bruce Harrison has the details on this emotional toll it's taking on the residents. Amid gathered residents, a sense of relief. Everyone made it out alive. But uncertainty, too, about what comes next. Just sad, frustrated. I cried because yeah. not knowing what I was going to come home to. Smoke damaged Stacy Patterson's apartment. Tonight, her family stays at a motel. And is there anything in the house that, that's really important to you that you're worried about right now? No. I'm just glad we're okay. Everybody's safe. All that can be replaced. So I'm just glad that everybody got out okay. A building manager and residents believe lightning started the fire. Initially initiated um, a really aggressive interior fire attack, but based on the volume of fire, uh, we actually pulled crews back out and went to a defensive operation. Battalion Chief Dan Tyke says no civilians or firefighters were injured. What did you shoot here? A uh, video of the fire. Josiah, a sixth grader, is visiting his grandmother at River Place. That person looks pretty panicked, frightened. What were you thinking or feeling when you were filming this video? Uh, nervous. Nervous? Because mm -hmm, people's lives was in danger. Resident Samantha Brandt likely helped save some of those lives. I saw the flames in the corner and I pulled on the uh, alarm and I noticed that the hallway lights were off. There was no emergency lights on. Everything was dark. So I started banging on doors. Wow. How many doors do you think you knocked on? All these doors, upper yeah. and second floor, and all these doors here and over there. So you were running? I was running. Brant nearly broke her nose, scrambling in the dark. Like her neighbors, thankful they're alive, but tired and worried. Well, you've been through a lot. How are you feeling right now? It's been a really tough week. And a new mental health clinic decades in the making is set to open its doors in the weeks ahead. The new facility is intentionally located near North 12th and West Cherry in Milwaukee. That's where experts say they have seen a great need for mental health services in that area. The location will provide easier access for anyone in a mental health crisis, regardless of age. You no longer have to take a, a half hour, 45 minute uh, bus ride in order to get services voluntarily uh, at, at the Wauwatosa uh, location. We know that this is a location central to many individuals that we currently serve and possibly will be served. And the center will be open every day around the clock for anyone in need beginning September 9th. All right, the time is now 536 and we still have a lot ahead on TMJ4 News today. Coming up next, our James Grow shows us how a Franklin woman's love for renewable energy and the Gilmore girls are fueling her to make a fully electric Jeep. That story plus a look at today's forecast. After
Those warmer temperatures, thanks Marissa. Well, a passion for renewable energy and the series The Gilmore Girls is driving a Franklin woman to tear apart her SUV. She's given it an all-electric makeover, going from gas to battery power. Our James Grow takes us to her garage. Love can make us do crazy things. I'm from Austria. Like move across the world. Yes. That's Dr. Veronica Wright. She had it all figured out until she met a boy. Love. I'm married to an American. It's always a boy. <laughs> she moved to Franklin in 2020 for her husband, but her first love was something else. I grew up watching a TV show called Gilmore Girls, and then this show, they would have this Jeep, and very early I fell in love this, with this Jeep. This Jeep, a 1999 Wrangler. But this one is completely gutted because she's combining her love for this car and her love for renewable energy. So we would be the first all-electric Gilmore Girls Jeep. She's replacing the combustion engine with an electric one. Right here would be where the electric motor will sit in the future. Dr. Wright has a PhD in physics and is an expert on batteries. She's doing this to promote electric car usage for a healthier environment. So we cannot contribute more waste. She said that to preserve the environment, we need to have a circular economy, which means more reusing of products. Gas is burned and gone forever. Lithium ion batteries can be repurposed even after we say they are quote unquote dead. Many people don't know that they still have 70 to 80 percent of their original capacity. And to get that message out, she started a YouTube channel. Hi everybody, this is Electrified Veronica. I'm building my own battery electric car that has as many functions as the original gas powered Jeep. Her car will have multiple batteries that will allow it to travel 130 miles per charge. I want to be converting Jeeps, boats and also other industries. But before that, she needs to focus on this Jeep. If you asked Dr. Wright a few years ago what she would be doing in 2022, she wouldn't have said this. Never, ever. But when All right, so they may no longer be the boys of summer, but a group of guys are proving they still got what it takes out on the diamond. Our Delaney Bright introduces us to some of the stars of the Greater Milwaukee Men's Senior Softball League. It's America's pastime. And if you can swing a bat, everybody plays has to bat. You're never too old to play. We have 30 players that are 80 and over, and we have one 90 year old in our league, and our average age is 76. But if you are too old to run, no problem. You can have a runner run for him. If you hit the ball to the outfield, they can't throw you out at first base. Sure, it's softball with a few adjustments, but these players 65 and up are as tough as nails. Yeah, I just had some stints put in, but you know what? I'm gonna try to get out there next week. I think I can do it. Our guy says, I, I just had my MRI done and I got a torn meniscus, but you know, I'm still gonna try to go out there and play today. Sponsored and supported by local businesses like VMP. The energy level that these individuals had, running faster than I, I think ever could around a baseball diamond. So um, it's really, it's very inspiring even to someone who's younger. So the intergenerational piece of this league is pretty impressive. The Greater Milwaukee Men's Senior Softball League has grown from six to 12 teams over the years, and it's receiving calls from out of state. I just even had a call from Minnesota. The guy says, I'm coming into Wisconsin. I want to play ball. My daughter lives in Milwaukee. Nowadays, it's hard to find the game in its purest form. The guy's got some, something to get up and out of bed to do and stretching and coming out here and you meet new friends. But if you're just old enough, you'll find it on three diamonds at McCarty Park. When the game's all over, they all go at a local pub, you know, and sit there. Hey, man. He says, yeah, well, I didn't get a hit today, but we won our game, you know. <laughs> I said, last week I got four hits and we lost, you know. And I mean, those are the things you talk about, and, and, and that's the fun of it. Delaney Bride, TMJ4 News. You can definitely run.